Mustafa Kamal Yunsal next. Born in 1965, he had his whole education, including dentistry, in Ankara, Turkey. In October 94, he was been awarded his PhD with the topic, the clinical measurement of stress and strain induced in Branamark implant fixtures and abutments during the fitting of a cast beam and during application of simulated functional loads. He has been granted an associate professor in 1999 and a professor in 2005. He is still teaching and practicing as a part-time professor at the University of Ankara, Faculty of Dentistry, Department of Fixed and Removable Prosthetics. He also works in his private clinic in Ankara, Tur Turkey, where he is mainly concentrated on dental implants and metal-free ceramic treatment options. He has been involved with education and teaching organizations for the last 20 years of his career. He has been lecturing to dentists, dental technicians, and dental assistants frequently in an attempt to keep up to date with their professions. Professor Yunsal is an active member of the European Association for Osseo Integration, OSADA, and EDAD, which is the Turkish Association of Aesthetic Dentistry. Since June of 2012, he has been the founding president of TFI, which is Together for Implantology, a dental implant platform. His lecture is on tips and tricks that some of us don't know in fixed restoration impressions. Thank you very much, Andrew. It was a very nice introduction. I would like to thank uh, Knightsbridge Academy to uh, give me my, uh, this opportunity to be with you and with my colleagues again. Uh, I just want to ask as usual, can you see it or hear me? Any problems with it? We can see and hear everything. Thank you. Right. Okay. This is the tips and tricks talk. Now, uh, I know uh, dentistry is going a long way. But now what we have to do is to concentrate on what is the basic of dentistry. Now, I hope it was a nice one. <laughs> Our aim is to take an accurate impression. Now, uh, what we do, we, we take impressions all our, uh, in our life. Uh, you know, uh, dentistry needs to take the impressions. You can take it digitally now, but uh, the traditional impression taking has some rules and most of the uh, world is still doing traditional impression. So we have to know what we are looking for. Now, uh, doing an impression, uh, what we are looking is to take the impression of not, not the prepared tooth, but the neighboring tooth as well. And we are looking for a discrepancy of 50 microns. Now, uh, when we say 50 microns, it just say, well, 50 microns, but I want to uh, show it with some examples. Now, this is a ruler, a, a ruler uh, of European style, not a British ruler. And uh, each uh, space in between these black lines is one millimeter. And what we are opting is 50 microns. So what we say, the classical books say that you will make an impression and prepare a, and uh, produce a final uh, crown or bridge and then you will have a discrepancy of 50 microns. Now, 50 microns is quite, quite small. Now, I can, I can show it to you. It's the same uh, ruler. It's a little bit exaggerated in the next picture. And you see the space between two black lines is 1,000 microns. And you are looking for 50 microns of uh, sensitivity. So if you don't understand it, let's put it in this way. A human hair is 50 to 70 microns. I mean, one human hair is 50 or 70 microns. And you are looking for, a, I mean, an acceptable gap of a hair. A, the thickness of a hair is your acceptable uh, limit for a crown. So what, what can you, how can you do it? You need to take a good impression. That's the basics of it. Now, what are we uh, doing? We are talking about uh, everything, but we are not talking about the criteria for a perfect impression. What's it? Now, you have to do not only the prepared tooth, but its finishing line, borders, uh, and uh, the neighboring tooth has to be perfect in details. You have to take a clear and detailed impression of the opposing jaw as well, because you are making a restoration which should not be high, uh, which should not be. Uh, out of occlusion. So you need a good impression of the uh, upper arc 
as well. And you don't need any voids or extra plaster uh, in your model. So what you have to do is the exact presentation of the mouth. Now, there are some proved uh, facts. Uh, these are all scientific. And let's go on, on them. 40 to 50% of the impressions are not satisfactory to produce acceptable restorations. I mean, we are making impressions all the time, but keep in mind that 50% of them actually are not acceptable to produce a 50 microns of fitting. So, uh, and this is proved with three different studies and 13% of them, one tree, 13% of them is rejected as there was no possibility to work with them. Now, uh, that's a real problem because you spend some time, you spend some material, you spend some uh, money, and then the technician just calls you and says, well, I cannot work on this. So uh, impression has to be done. Now, saying, having said that, uh, I'm coming to some material aspects. Uh, I want to just go on the classification of fixed restoration impression materials. The first generation of them was polysul polysulfides, which we don't use it anymore. So I'm not using any, uh, spending any time on that. We are having C-type silicones, po silicones, polyethers, and uh, vinyl polysiloxanes, or in other words, uh, A-silicones. Now let's start with C-type impression materials. Uh, some of the examples are here. I mean, these are the brands uh, that is used mainly. Uh, and uh, mo most of the time we are using, we are taking uh, impression with this type of materials, especially when the uh, cost of them is, uh, cost of them is important. Uh, we prefer C-type uh, silicones because they are cheaper than the others. Uh, they are obviously uh, much better than alginate impressions. Uh, however, they may lose their dimensional stability as short as 60 minutes. So you have a working time of uh, nearly four hours. Now I said 60 minutes before, but 60 minutes is the uh, shortest time that you can use them. But in real life, you can use these impressions for four hours. I mean, you can pour the model uh, of following uh, the four hour that you take the impression. The main reason of this short working time is the uh, alcohol coming uh, evaporating from the material's body. Uh, and then we have polyethers. Polyethers are coming with different styles. I'm mean, not different styles, but uh, different uh, mixing styles. You can mix them by hand or you can mix them with uh, uh, impression guns and uh, special machines. Now polyethers uh, only produced by, uh, by 3M because they have the patent of this and they are uh, the only producer of polyethers. Now there are some disadvantages with polyethers and advantages, I'll go through them and uh, we'll talk to, uh, about them together. Uh, they are difficult in hand mixing uh, and they are very rigid. So because of their rigidity, it's very difficult to take them, to remove them from the undercuts if you have a mouth with many undercuts. Uh, and you must be careful because these are not uh, always compatible with some synthetic uh, plasters. So the technician, if he's not used to work with that, may uh, use a synthetic plaster and then phone you and say, well, uh, Doc, I, I, I'm sorry, but I cannot remove the uh, plaster from the impression. So this is because some of the, uh, some of the uh, plaster materials are not compatible with polyethers. They are potentially allergenic and obviously they are expensive. But they have some huge advantages. They, ha they have high tear resistance, which they do not tear very easily. They are hydrophilic in their nature. Uh, their dimensional stability is the best of all the impression materials. Uh, because of this, you can use the same uh, impression to produce uh, more than one uh, set of models. And in a dark and uh, non-humid uh, environment, 
you can keep the uh, impression as well as sending your impressions to another city. If your uh, laboratory is in another city, it's very suitable to, uh, to use polyethers. And now uh, we came to polyvinyl siloxane. Uh, there are different brands. I mean, all the impression, uh, impression companies, impression material companies produce uh, A-type silicones and they are very handy. They come uh, with a flowable one and uh, they have a putty. Uh, you use the flowable uh, silicone in the mouth uh, and at the same time, your assistant prepares the uh, putty and then you put it in the mouth and take the impression. It's quite easy, but they also have some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, not all of the brands show the same hydrophilic character. I mean, uh, A-type silicones are not hydrophilic in their nature. Uh, because of that, all companies put some other uh, chemical agents to make them uh, more hydrophilic. Uh, they are incompatible with latex gloves, if your uh, assistant is using some latex gloves, uh, she'll not be able to uh, mix it with the gloves. Dimensional stability is between C-type silicones and polyethers. They are hydrophobic in its nature, I have already told that. But they have some advantages as well. High elasticity to resist tearing, good detail capturing, reasonable waiting time on the bench, and no toxicity or allergenicity. And now, uh, this was the uh, basics about the impression materials, but I want to tell something about the importance of tray adhesives. Uh, we do not think that they are important, but they are very important, let's see. Tray adhesives are uh, chemical agents that we apply on the trays so that the impression material holds better in the tray. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, we have to use different materials, different bonding agents for uh, every different uh, impression material. Polyethers has different uh, adhesives, alginate has a different one, uh, and uh, A-type silicone has a different one. Although there are some uh, universal bonding agents, uh, specific bonding agents are much better than the uh, universal ones. Now, why do you have to use it? We have to use it not just to retain the impression material, but to overcome the shrinkage of the impression material. If you apply the uh, bonding agent to the tray, then when the impression sets, it will not be able to contract. So uh, your impression will be safe and uh, correct. But if you don't apply it, there is a minimum uh, chance of contraction within the silicone. So if the silicone contracts, you will have a gap in between the tray. And more than this, your impression may be a little bit, uh, how to say, uh, shrink. So you have to use impression uh, tray uh, adhesive. So let's look at the impression trays. Which tray should we use? There are many trays in the uh, market. This type of perforated trays, like this one, some plastic ones, some disposable ones, and the bite impression trays. Now, uh, I always prefer this type of uh, perforated tray with a rim on it. The rim is here because it just produce more retention to the impression material. Uh, however, I don't know the other side of the world, but in Turkey, we have uh, this kind of trays, which I do not like very much because uh, they are not very standard in size. Uh, they have small holes and they don't have any rims around them. Okay, so the other question is whether to use a perforated tray or a closed tray. Uh, the purpose of perforation is threefold. Reducing the pressure during the impression, firm retention of the impression material, and uh, rims and, uh, and uh, to increase the retention of the impression material. So if you use this type of perforated tray, 
it will be much easier to retain the impression material on the tray. But um, the disadvantage of this, if you are using a um, flowable type impression material, it's very difficult to take it with them because it's, because it's perforated and all the impression material will uh, flow from the perforations. So uh, therefore you have to choose a closed tray. And in this case, you have to use a, a tray adhesive with the uh, impression material. And there are some much more different uh, tray types, perforated ones, uh, small ones, only a partial one. Uh, I use all of them, but I use this uh, bite tray, especially the uh, semi uh, bite tray. Uh, I don't like them very much because uh, it's very easy uh, to deform the tray. And I will show you some examples with the uh, other slides. Now, uh, the main thing with the tray selection is your tray have to be uh, rigid, satisfactorily rigid, because if the uh, tray is uh, not rigid, your impression will change. So you have to use a tray which is very rigid for your purpose. So a flexible uh, mobile phone is good, but a flexible uh, tray is not a good thing. So how long do you need following the preparation for a good impression? Well, the main thing with taking the impression, uh, I mean, we are fighting with blood and circular flow because the circular flow and blood, which are both liquids, uh, they just uh, don't allow your impression material to get into the sulcus. So what you have to do is to stop bleeding or circular fluid flow uh, with the uh, with uh, prior to impression making, so uh, this this question depends on how you work at it. I mean, if you don't apply any special agents to stop bleeding, then you have to wait at least three minutes before making the impression so that the bleeding does stop. Uh, increased uh, washing of the mouth by the patient makes it makes bleeding uh, stop makes bleeding more so it's difficult to take the impression if your patient uh, washes his or her mouth uh, too much uh, just going on deep on that i just want to talk about bite impressions and then i'll talk about uh, circular fluid as well now bite uh, impressions has a potential uh, hazard for uh, all of us because when you ask patients to bite something, they don't know what to do or what to expect. So they ju you just put the impression material in both uh, surfaces of the tray and ask the patient to bite it. But because the patient doesn't have any clue what to do, he just bites on it. And although he feels that uh, he's chewing the tray, he doesn't aware how, how important it is. So when you make an impression and if the patient uh, bites on the side of the tray, uh, the edge of the tray, the patient will realize it, but uh, will not understand what it is. So when you remove the impression, if you see that the patient has uh, bit the tray, then you have to repeat the impression because uh, this will always come to you as a, a high crown or high restoration. And also there's a tendency in people, if you put something in a, uh, not in both sides, but in one side of the mouth, they tend to move their uh, jaw to, to that side. So you have to check it correctly. If you are using a semi-impression tray, you have to check uh, very, very, uh, in, in, you have to check it uh, with caution so that he will not uh, bite in the in a position that he doesn't have to do. So when can you use uh, the segmented trays? I only use segmented trays if I'm doing a single crown restoration. If the restoration is more than a single crown, I always take the uh, impression of the full jaws, upper and lower 
to the other. Now, let's come back to soft tissue retraction. Now, we have some methods of soft tissue retraction. The first of them is to use a cautery machine or uh, use a laser to stop bleeding. The other one is to pack a cord uh, into the sulcus. And the third one, and uh, something uh, which is gaining popularity, is the uh, pastes that we can use to uh, extend the uh, sulcus. Now, when you pack the cords, uh, there is the likelihood that you can uh, damage the tissue. So what you have to do, uh, don't use the maximum thickness uh, cord. If, if it's a young patient without any periodontal problems, uh, the uh, tiniest uh, cord will be enough for you. And you have to insert it with, with a uh, gentle pressure. Too much pressure will also damage the gum as well. And uh, there are special tools uh, for packing the cords. Uh, you can use them and it will be enormous help for everyone. I like to use uh, pests uh, in the last five or six years. Uh, they are very handy. They stop bleeding as well. And uh, they are much easier than using a, a retraction cord. So how to apply them? Uh, they have a very tiny tip. You have to insert the tip between the preparation and the gum. And you steadily press the uh, gum to uh, extend some material into the sulcus. Obviously, this is not enough. If you ask the patient to bite a cut and roll on top of it, or you press it with your finger pressure, then when you wash and remove the paste, you will have a nice retraction all over, and you will not have any bleeding at all. Now, there, obviously, there are some other bleeding management agents. Uh, most of them uh, contain ferric sulfate. Some aluminum preps and astringent are all in that category. Uh, what I don't like with ferric sulfate is uh, it's very, you know, uh, if you draw, put it on, on somewhere, it stains uh, everything. That's one uh, difficulty. The other one is when you put it in the mouth, it uh, stops bleeding, but the blood clot stays in place. And that blood clot, uh, does not allow you to take a good impression. So uh, you just wash it but, uh, to remove it, to remove the clot. But when you wash it, then you start having a bleeding again. So uh, my preference in the last years is to use paste instead of some ferric sulfate or aluminum solutions. Uh, there are two types of retraction cords. One of them is braided, the other one is knitted. I prefer the knitted one because it's very easy to pack uh, into the sulcus than the braided ones. This is a, a retraction cord of knitted one. You just see the knit, knits between the uh, lines and then you just pack it very easily if you need it. Uh, there's one method which is advocated by uh, many books, uh, but I'm not very, uh, personally, I'm not very successful on using that method, uh, although I will tell it to you. Now, uh, these suggest that you can put the uh, flowable impression material uh, around the sulcus and apply some uh, air pressure with the air syringe. Now, this method is uh, very logical. But when I tried to do it, I always ended up with uh, air bubbles within the sulcus. So I'm not using that. If I'm making a, a good retraction, uh, I just put the flowable impression material around the teeth. That's all. I don't uh, spray any air. Now, what's the ideal impression? What are we after? We are after a very good finishing line reproduction. So. The impression material here representing a good impression because it just shows you your finishing line and then the uh, 
gap around it. So you, your technician can produce a very nice fitting crown on that impression. I just want to uh, see, uh, show you, share with you uh, how the problems uh, get on with our impressions. Now, if you see something like that, you know, the impression material is not uh, very complete on the edges. There are uh, six causes of it. Improper retraction, insufficient removal of blood or cervical fluid, insufficient drying, impression making close polymerization. I mean, uh, you put the impression material, but it was just polymerizing and then you just pressed it on the, uh, with the tray. So that produces something like this. Uh, your impression materials tear resistance may not be as good and the improper application uh, or too little silicone which is not enough to flow on the uh, sulcus are all the causes of this type of impression. If you have air bubbles just as I said before uh, it may be because you uh, use the air syringe uh, you could have left some uh, blood or saliva here. Uh, you may be storing your silicone at a high temperature, but you shouldn't put the uh, impression material in the fridge. The impression materials, all of them, has to be stored at room temperature. Uh, and you may also put the tray uh, in a false position, wrong position. If you have a tearing at preparation margins, you may have insufficient retraction, uh, bleeding stopper chemicals, uh, some of them are not compatible with the silicone that you are using, and they just retard the setting of the uh, silicone. So uh, if you don't know this uh, and check the uh, setting time by touching the impression, the impression material around the tray will be set and you say, well, it's set, I can remove it. But because of the uh, bleeding stopper agent, uh, your silicone within the sulcus is not polymerized. So you, you end up with such kind of uh, unsatisfactory impressions. Uh, you may have some temporary cement uh, remnants in the sulcus. Uh, you, have, you just remove the uh, tray too early. Uh, you, you may not be able to mix it properly or uh, your silicone may reach its expiry date. And if you see uh, impression tray visible within the uh, uh, impression, uh, it's the, the first uh, thing that you suspect is the improper tray selection. Uh, errors in tray positioning, too much pressure you exerted on the tray. Uh, you may not be putting the constant pressure on the tray and uh, the impression material may be uh, less than what has to be there. And if you see flowable silicone lacking, then it means you, you didn't put uh, enough uh, silicone around the teeth. But the, mo the most of the time, the, the main problem is the putty that you are using is too hard. So when you press the putty, all the silicone material, I mean the flowable silicone just runs out and uh, you are left out without a detailed impression of the sulcus. And if you have a lack of polymerization, it means you you couldn't uh, mix it properly and your expiry date may be ended as well. Uh, also, intraoral immediate temporary materials. Uh, you know, we, we use immediate uh, impression material, uh, immediate uh, temporary materials uh, for tooth preparations and they have some kind of uh, oily bis GMA uh, in them. Uh, and if, if it stays on the tooth, then when you take the impression following the uh, temporary making, you'll end up with a uh, impression like this one. If you remove the tray early, 
And if you store your silicon in the fridge, you may end up with an uh, improper polymerization. Uh, removing the tray is also important. How to remove the tray? Uh, it has to, I mean, not all teeth are same. Uh, in some uh, patients, you have some teeth, which is in awkward positions. So if you have a very angulated teeth, what you have to do is to remove the non-angulated side first and then remove the angulated side. Because if you do it other way around, then you will be forcing the impression material to leave the tray. And not only that, you will uh, also damage the impression uh, as well. So what you have to do to remove the uh, normal angulated side first and then the uh, too much angulated side. Uh, digital impressions are uh, another story. I'm not covering that in my uh, speech this time. Uh, and I would like all of you, thanking all of you for watching me. Thanks. I can take any questions if you have any. Uh, I'm with you. I don't know if I have, uh, I'm okay with the time. But I'm waiting what you would suggest, Andrew. You can take some questions, that's fine. Yes. If anybody has any questions, they can put them in the Q&A on, the, um, on the Zoom meeting if they want. I think they have to put it on the chat, don't they? Yeah, they okay, or the chat. Yeah. No, you must have answered everybody's questions, I think. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Always good. So thank you very much for your time. We have a, a little 10 minute break now until the next professor, but thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mustafa. That was great. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. So 10 minutes until the next one, people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye.